Hello and welcome. I'm Peasant, and today we're going to be doing an over-explained run for serpents slumbering beneath the island. Okay, this is a funky spirit. Um, I'm not an expert at this spirit. This spirit is incredibly powerful in the right hands. These are not the most expert snake hands, but these are slightly snake hands. I, I can do okay with them. Um, but there's nuance here that I might well, you might well miss out on. I'd say the key thing for someone starting with snake is to really make sure you're using your elemental aegis. So we're going to go straight to that. We're not going to look at anything else. We're going to we're going to come back to everything else later. So, elemental aegis costs you an energy. Costs you these things. You you probably can see that. Defend two in target land and all adjacent lands. For every presence on your deep slumber track, defend one in target land and all adjacent lands. This is an incredibly powerful card because it lets you defend in multiple lands at the same time. Um, and so if we look at our board. Um, look at this, the board we're on. Um, given that in the early game, each each um, each ravage is going to happen in lands that are adjacent, apart from jungles here, so deserts or wetlands or mountains, um, Aegis is going to be able to mean you can defend in an entire land type, apart from in this map forest. It's going to vary map by map. But later game, if the, if you're dealing with ravages in multiple um, land types, it's also going to be able to do a lot of duty. Um, but, crucially, you need to have extra presence on your deep slumber track. Well, what's the deep slumber track? Well, let me tell you. So you start off limited to five presence on the island. Raise this with your Absorb Essence power card. Each use covers the lowest revealed number and your, your presence limit is the lowest uncovered number. So this is what another spirit, um, like Ocean, where it's, it's played quite differently in solo um, than in multi-spirit. Um, in that because you, when you use Absorb Essence, let's look at Absorb Essence, you actually remove a presence from the board, you're simultaneously in increasing the amount of presence you can have on the board, and you're removing it. So there's less pressure on this track, but you still want to do it. You still want to Absorb Essence as much as possible, because it's incredibly powerful. It costs you two energy, but it gains you three energy, so already onto a winner. It's gains you an energy. It also, um, you also gain another energy <laughs> down here. See, it's one of these ones where in true solo, um, this another can be yourself. Um, so you, and this extra element here is very useful too. So this is, is a somewhat convoluted uh, <laughs> spirit, and this is a somewhat convoluted uh, attempt at an overview. So if we look at our panel here, you're like, well, what do we want elements for? These innate. Um, typically, these innates are harder to get. You kind of need plant, and you don't really start with any plant on your cards. Let's see, no plant here. These are great, but I find them hard to get in solo till at least the mid game. But these, on the other hand, are very powerful and very useful. So for every fire mounted one damage to a building at zero range. So you've got to be thinking about where you place your presence for both for anything on here. This one is even more more powerful. Two moon, two mountain for each two moon, two mountain. You two fear and you may push a town from a target land. So this is going to happen in the slow phase. So you will be able to plan for this and push a town out that might do a, a blight ravage next turn. That's kind of, so that's kind of how that goes as well. This really is convoluted. But yeah, this is it's important to, to consider this, and it's important to prioritize Absorb Essence, I think, to play this spirit well. Because every Essence you've absorbed increases the defend on your Elemental Aegis. So that, I'd say, is critical to, to, to being reasonably successful. That's actually just look at what they've got. So they've got a, a funky track as well. Um, you can't claim this presence until you've cleared both sides of these. Um, Typically, you want to get this second play and then go along this way and get this reclaim and then get this water and then get this earth. And then by then, the game will have diverged enough that this is not such a straightforward choice. Um, uh, and this is a growth two spirit. Now, that has some implications um, that are nice. It means that reclaiming is not horribly penalized because you can reclaim and still place presence. Okay, so that's an impact of the growth two. Um, is that reclaiming is not so bad for you. And there's a chance that you might want to reclaim to get your Aegis back most or a lot of turns. Because remember, this is going to allow us to defend in multiple lands, which is very strong. Um, so we might well want to use it every turn. Um, and the other thing is uh, we, of course, want to be placing presence every turn as well. Um, you, if you, you, you don't want to not do this because you, you start off very slow, not doing a lot, and then you become 
very powerful. But you don't become powerful if you don't place presence. So you want to do this every single turn. Um, with no exceptions, um, I think. Except, except if they will keep you in the game to, to do these other things first. You want to be doing this every turn. Or if you might have a way of cheating presence out, like you might have gained a major power that lets you place presence or something. Um, but yeah, you definitely you definitely don't skip this. But note, it has to be land without blight. So that is something to to bear in mind and consider. Okay, you've got a straight gain for energy. You're not going to want to use that much um, because it's going to be more useful to gain power cards and reclaim probably your Aegis and your Absorb Essence. Um, we'll we'll get into the nitty gritty of gaining power cards in once we're into the game. Serpent Wakes in power in true solo is tricky to um, tricky to trigger. Um, because you don't start with money with any plant apart from these any spaces that you can use as plant. This second one down here is incredibly powerful, adding a presence at one range. Um, but again, hard to trigger. Um, you kind of need to to draft mountain plant cards to have a chance at it. Um, and it's almost, I'd say it's almost a red herring. I'm not an expert serpent player though. though I'm sure there are ways of doing this, um, but they're just possibly beyond me. Okay, and then down here gaining a major power. Don't worry about this. By the time you're in the late game, you know, we'll, we'll worry about that. There are other cards. Okay, so Gift of Flowing Power, uh, Target Spirit gains an energy and may play another power card by paying its cost. You may well want to play this, and again, in true solo, you can play this on yourself. You might want to play this on yourself to basically gain another fire element um, for the sake of using this innate. Um, yeah. Tricky. I'm sure there's depth here that I'm unaware of. Gift the Primordial Deeps is uh, also another one that's this is and this is a spirit that's very different to play solo and multi spirit. I probably should make us a, a multi spirit over explain with this spirit. Let's just say spirit again. Um, and it get, of course, this has the moon and mountain elements that we love for this ability here, which gains us fear and lets us push a town. Um, and you can you can gain a power and then choose to gain more moons and mountains if you like. I mean, this is pretty good. I think some players actually, this is a, a card they forget fairly early on, weirdly. And then, of course, we've got Absorb Essence. Ah, okay, I think that's too, that's enough naked explanation. Let's uh, get into the actual game. So, we have had a... Hmm. We've got a Mountain Explore. Just read my desktop's looking weird. But it looks fine on the video, so let's, let's just carry on. We've got ourselves a Mountain Explore. So we have two towns that are going to be built here this turn. Um, and... But here's something. This is inherently Aegisable next turn. These are adjacent. We've even already got the presence that's in or adjacent to those lands. So these are just not really much of a problem. Um, so we're probably going to want to do things that just help us kind of grow as a spirit. He says, he says vaguely. So almost certainly going to want to absorb essence turn one because that gains us, um, that gain, that net gains us two energy and gets us a useful placement. And there is a little trick you can do in solo that I think I will do. I just need to remember what it is. <laughs> okay, here's the little trick. So this is a lovely power that has lots of elements on it, but it also kind of has a whole other element, and it's unusual for a power to give you more than one element of the same type. But if we play this in conjunction with Gift of Flowing Power, we can actually get ourselves the an extra... So this is going to provide a fire... And then we could actually use this to gain two mountains, which is going to give us two mountains and two fire, which we can use to destroy a town at range zero. So there's only one town on the map that we're worried about. These we've kind of we're going to be able to defend next turn with Aegis. So I think we want to place a presence in here and destroy this town in the slow phase. That's a plan. So we're going to want to play this place this presence here. But intriguingly. Intriguingly, kind of, I'm trying to. I'm, yeah, this will gain us the power we need to play Absorb Essence. There's a chance we'll use this power card. Okay, let's get this power. This is a complex spirit. Okay, 
<laughs> They're complex. Complex spirit. Okay. Now, when I'm playing with this spirit, I really favor Moon Mountain. Because I really like this ability to gain fear and push towns. This works for me. Um, this is also... Interestingly, this is, gives us jungle defend. And remember, our Aegis can't stretch to both jungles. So this is already looking pretty nice. As it's an overexplained, I will go through all of them. Um, pushing an explorer prevents a town build. That's, you know, that's perfectly respectable. But on elements-wise, it's kind of, it's got a moon that we're interested in, but we're not into the air or the sunshine. So that kind of works somewhat against it. I, I like this fast fear option, um, but this is just better um, for the fast fear. So this is clearly better for me than this. A serpent expert might find a strong use for this. This is basically the same card as Gift of Flowing Power. Uh, target Spirit may immediately play another power card by paying its cost. God, I wonder if that is super good. Because that basically we can use to do the same thing we were going to do with Gift of Flowing Power. Um, except that Fire Water is better for, the, for this and this. So this might be slightly better to go instead of Gift of Flowing Power, but I'd rather something that helps us on the board. I'd be interested if any snake experts have tuned in and can uh, chime in on this. And then Call of the Dahan Ways is a weird card. It feels like it's less powerful than it should be. Um, just as a kind of, uh, just from experience. Interestingly... I'm, t I'm quite tempted to take it. If it had if it had better elements, it's not going to get better elements now. The two moons replacing a town with a Dahan is very cool, um, but it is a bit off off element for us. If this, in addition to having moon mounts, it also has the plant. That means we might get a f bonus energy, and, and it has mountain plant as well. For this ability, that if we can trigger it, then we are laughing. You'll notice on these tracks, there is a water here. So we don't need to find water so much as we need to find um, plants and mountains. So I think Dark and Tangled for that kind of Dark and Tangled mess of reasoning. Okay, so we're gonna do we're gonna do the old trick, which is, of course, we're gonna place a presence, and so that we've got a town that we, to destroy. I think I'm gonna destroy this inland forest. Uh, jungle even. Um, because clearing the in inland is a good idea because you can potentially prevent explores, which is which is great. We love that. Um, though, it, there's also, you could, there would be some value to doing it in here, but as we are kind of covered by Elemental Aegis, I'm going to use this opportunity to try and clear this, or potentially clear this land that might be more awkward for us. So, we're gonna, I'm going to go down the bottom track because I want to get to two plays. I'm going to play this in here. And we're going to go Gift of Flowing Power. So this is a bit funky. <laughs> the spirit's funky. So we Gift of Flowing Power on ourselves, giving us... So the fact we've played this gives us the fire we want. And then we're going to play another power card, which is going to be Absorb Essence. Now, this is where you have to be careful with this spirit, because Absorb Essence is removing our presence from the board. So you do have to be careful with this. <laughs> you do have to be careful. Um, oh yeah, and I've not used it. So, um, because it's a solo, I get to target myself and then remove one of these presents. I'm going to remove this presence that we started with <laughs> because I want to destroy this town um, with Serpent Rousers in anger. And you'll notice that it's only... it's We've only got one mountain. We will soon have another mountain. The nice thing is that our presence place is at three range, so we can... We can reach anywhere on the island um, next turn. And remember, we are placing presents every turn. But this is quite low, a small amount of presents to have, but I think it's it's okay. Fret not. And we're going to gain this mountain. Not only does this get us the, the destruction, but it also gets us the fear. Okay, so Sand Explore. And now we've got Serpent Rouse and Anger. So... We're going to get to destroy this town and then gain two fear, which is very, very nice. Next turn, we've got the Ravage. And you notice here, these are desert... Uh, these, sorry, sands are going to be defendable with Aegis on a future turn as well. So, yeah, we love Aegis. We love Aegis. And Absorb Essence is going to power up our Aegis as well. And it might seem like, oh, we don't need that much power. But especially with events in the game, yeah, you, you want that power. 
So we destroy the town and gain some gratuitous fear, so three fear in total. And now we have the Ravage. So to Aegis in here, we need a presence in it. one of these lands. It doesn't have to be this land, but this land also protects us in case, uh, you know, it works for all of these. Interestingly, our Reclaim also allows us to move a presence. So I could actually place this presence in here. Uh, sorry, I could move this presence in here and then place the presence somewhere else. Mm. <laughs> okay, let me think. This presence is actually not doing a lot for us now. It's a terrible for Aegis, so I am very tempted to move this into a land that's going to build anyway. Um, because we've played our Gift of Fla Flowing Power, we're, we're not going to be able to do that same trick, probably. Yeah, maybe, the, maybe this was a mistake. Okay, so... So, given that there are Dahan in this land, the Aegis will mean that the Defend in here will protect it, and then the Dahan will clear the land in the Ravage. So that's fine. That the that Defend is also going to help us here. Okay, we don't need to make this decision about... We don't need to make a decision just yet. In fact, I don't need to reclaim this turn. What am I on about? I could reclaim this turn and get the second play and do pretty much the same thing, but add the Aegis in as well. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Because we've got four energy. You notice that's we've, we've kind of jumped up in energy because of playing Absorb Essence. But I'm actually not sure I want to go down. I, I'm not sure I, I kind of want to have more presence than this. Because playing with events, we could have something that just destroys our presence. Well, or kind of effectively just destroys our presence. So I'm not going to reclaim here. I'm going to I'm going to gain a power card. Um, It's tempting. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm. I'm not gonna uh, go with absorb this turn. We've revealed this moon here. So if I play, say, gift or any of these, then I'm going to have the. I'm. I'm gonna be able to get the fear out of this, which I think is very helpful for kind of getting you, getting you, going in the first, the first stages of the game. So I'm gonna go with gaining a power card. We could gain a major here. We really could gain a major. I think uh, typically people forget Gift of Primordial Deeps in this situation. Or maybe Dark and Tangled. Let's look at a major. There are, I think this is a spirit with quite a lot of um, juncture points. You, you know, you can kind of go a lot of different ways. Because here's the thing, we've actually got quite a lot of energy. And if we gain a major that's super useful, we can afford to use it we're going to be able to afford to use it in the early game. We're only going to have two plays for ages, right? We may, we may as well make them count. We're also, as this spirit, not penalised for reclaiming very much. So I think we look at a major. Now, we might not take it. We might decide that, that these are better than the major power we look at. But let's have a, have a, have a see what we get. Okay. Well, 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 well. These are certainly some cards. These are these are these are definitely cards. <laughs> okay, so let's let's go through all them. This isn't overexplained. Vengeance of the Dead doesn't do much on its own, apart from this fast fear. You might sometimes pick this just for this fear. Um, this beast element is really unfortunate for us, despite that we are a big beast. We're not very beasty. We'd have to use both of these ennies or or the any from this to get this threshold, and then we'd be kind of mildly underwhelmed anyway. Let's forget about Vengeance of the Dead for now. This, it targets two lands, but fire and water, these are thresholds we're not, that aren't going to be that hard for us. They might not be easy for us right now, but we're going to have a water here, a fire here. And if we play this with um, Gift of Flowing Power, for example, then we will have the threshold on that, which is a frankly scandalous amount of damage. It's very expensive, but we might be able to afford it. We're not going to be able to play it this turn. That's the that, that's the downside of that. But I think this is a strong pick for this spirit. 
Land Thrashes and Furious Pain is one of my favourite base game cards. It has perfect elements for our second track of our innate, including this power here that I've not even mentioned. Why haven't I mentioned it? Because most of the time it won't ever come into the game. But if you go with cards like this that have all of the elements for it, you, it's more likely. It's more likely. The thing is, by the time this comes into play, typically you're so powerful that it doesn't matter. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. It's getting to this point in the game that's the crucial part. Twisted Flowers Murmur Ultimatums, it has the plant, which means we've got potential for getting this innate, which could accelerate us. It's also an incredibly powerful card, but it does require a Sacred Sight, as does Fire and Flood, by the way, which is awkward for us. Um, it also isn't going to do anything for us until Terror Level is 2 or higher. Which is, let's have a look at our cards, which is a way off. We are nine fear away from that. In itself, Twisted Flowers would contribute four fear. And a strife, by the way, which is pretty useful. We could strife that coastal city, which means that that land just wouldn't really pose us any problems for a while. But although we don't typically have a lot of sacred sites as this spirit, because we're constantly absorbing, especially in solo, we're constantly absorbing our own essence, and we have, we, it's good for us to be in among the invaders to use our serpent rouses in anger. Um, it's relatively easy for us to make sacred sites because we do have this kind of built-in move of presence. Okay, this is actually um, fire and flood. We could use pretty early on to just maybe finish the game really early which is white, which feels pretty good. This isn't going to be that great for us for a while. This, there's, I mean, there's no blight has gone down on the island, and I can't see any blight going down anytime soon. Um, we could, of course, use this this turn to destroy the town that gets built here. And we could even use it with Threshold to, uh, to do an uninspiring one damage in an adjacent region. I think we take Fire and Flood. We keep uh, Gift of Flowing Power. I think it's just too, too too cunning and too useful. Now we have to make a decision about what to get rid of. We definitely don't get rid of Aegis. We could get rid of either of these. Um, I mean, we've, I, we're well on our way to solving this problem forever. We need to think about what we're doing this turn, though. We're going to Dark and Tangled Woods play from one of these lands here. Um, sorry, we're going to Aegis from one of these lands here. We may as well play... If we play Dark... If we play this, because we've got a Moon revealed here, we will get that to Fear. I think that's something that's worth thinking about. But this, we could potentially gain a Minor Power, and then if it's not something we want to use, we could, we could um, just gain the Mountain and the Moon anyway. I'm going to keep Gift of Primordial Deeps. And yeah, we're not getting rid of Gift of Flowing Power. Especially given that Gift of Flowing Power could work well with Fire and Flood. Okay, so that was that. God, that took a while. <laughs> we go to two plays. Um, and we could play in any of these lands. So, given that we are going to be... Um... Oh, we... Um, we... <sighs> Interestingly, we could reveal the fire so that we get the town destruction instead of the town push with fear. Um, I actually... Hmm. Given that fire and flood is going to target two lands, I think we kind of... We might want to favor the fear rather than the destruction. It's interesting, though, that we could go with a single play here. I want to go with Gift of the Primordial Deeps, though. And so we need to think about where we put this presence. If we place the presence here, as you know, if we put it here, it solves the problem in here. And then when we um, when we reclaim and move a presence, we could make a sacred site here for the targeting of this Fire and Flood, which could be good. We might not want to Fire and Flood this early. We'll see. Okay, so we're going to go with these two. And we've already got the Moons of Mountains. But yeah, I think this is uh, this is good enough. Okay, so 
general rule, whenever you're doing anything that gains you a card, you want to do it first, apart from Bringer, the one example. Oh wow, the game's trying to get us to do that top tier of the innate now that I've... This, um, this business here. Now that I've said, now nah, we're not doing that. The game's saying, yes, we are. Um, but let's actually assess these properly. So, we these are lovely elements. Moon, fire, mountain are great. Fire, mountain's great. Moon, fire is less ideal, but still good. The mountain is the really key element that we love the most in both tracks. So... That, for that reason alone, we might want to not use Land of Haunts and Embers. This is a very powerful card, um, but it's not ideal for us, especially as it's going to add Blight to the island. But this could be a way to get a very fast win, but I'm not going to go with it. I'm going to go with... Um, by preventing a build. Okay, what about this? This has Plant and Fire and Moon, but this, this threshold we're unlikely to get because it's Beast and we're not really very beasty. And if we are going to spend our precious any's on anything we're going to be spending it on triggering a major power rather than a minor power um, and also it requires a sacred site for an effect that is good but not imminently relevant imminently relevant immediately relevant so that leaves us what these two up here gold to lure is just actually a very powerful card um, for zero it has the fire mountain we like and gathering an explorer or a town and adding a strife is is very very strong um, these mountains are adjacent to every single land on the board, apart from that coastal jungle. Um, and this is just a very, very easy for, way for us to get triggers. The thing is, we've actually got enough cards to play. And because we're not really penalised for reclaiming, this isn't as valuable as it might appear. This can solve us some very awkward problems. It's a Defend 10 card um, with perfect elements for us. And like I was saying with Fire and Flood, although we're not, we don't necessarily have sacred sites lying around, it's not too hard for us to make them, because we do of course place a presence and we can move a presence each turn. Um, so, I mean, let's say we we if we used, we could even use the other. Okay, here's another thing to consider: Gift of Primordial Deeps allows us to play it and meet this turn. Um, if we did that with Gold's Allure. We could just take this town and put it somewhere else. Um, in the slow phase as well, which is exactly when we want it to be. Because if we brought the town before, it would actually add damage to that Ravage. I, yeah, let's go Gold's Lord because we can use it right now. And there's actually no benefit to just gaining this Moon and Mountain because we've already at the, the two Moon, two Mountain. So let's play Gold's Allure. Gold's Allure is also coincidentally going to give us the fire we put... It's not going to do anything, because we're not in with anyone. But uh... Okay, so, we'll Elemental Aegis in there. It's three defend, because we've absorbed a single um, one of our own presence. All right. In a land with exactly one Dahan that has or is adjacent to a, ta a city replacing uh, a Dahan with a town. We got unlucky there. This, this is actually an event I play around probably way more than I should. Then beasts are attacking. Okay. So, we are going to lose our beast if we use it to destroy this town. Um, but I think that's okay. This is still pretty valuable for us. So, we will do that. It also gets us a, another fear card. Or a fear card, even. Okay, and then we got lucky. This is actually a really nasty bit of the event there. Let me just... Okay, that fear card just gave us some defend. This um, this here, Reckless Offensive, I have lost a game <laughs> to this before. Um, on each band, choose a land with at least two Dahan and at least two uh, buildings. Each um, Dahan destroys a building and add a Blight. I have lost to that. Which is why when you do have a Blight Island, you want to, you never want to be on just one Blight because you, just, you can just lose so easily. Okay, so... Uh, the fear card we had that just kind of shot on by defend three and all coastal lands. Okay, that's what all that is. Uh, so this uh, this ravage here, we have a counter attack, and so we we'll destroy the town, and then we have those sand builds and a wetland explore. So I do get to do gold's allure this turn because um, I get to play it with that, and we have serpent rouse of anger. No one decided to explore in with me, which is, you know, which actually doesn't matter because unless they brought a town with them, 
And now that I've got Gold's Allure, I'm going to want to put a presence in one of these mountains so that I can yoink... Um, yoink people in there. So given that this land is defended and this land's defended, I could drag... Um, it's, wow, it's a town and an explorer. Okay, that changes things a little bit. We can drag this explorer in and prevent that build. I think that's probably the best thing we can do with this. Um... And because it's a gather, it's even more powerful. We can also drag this town in as well. It might seem a little bit paranoid uh, to drag this out when we know we're going to defend three with this next turn. And that, maybe that's because it is, but... <laughs> Events can spoil your day. Um... All right, so now we have Serpent Rounds and Anger, and Anger? Anger. So unfortunately, we don't have any um, any buildings in with us to destroy, but we can we can set that up. Okay, so we have a Ravage this turn. This should be fine. We are going to Aegis anyway because this is a lovely counterattack, which means we are going to reclaim. Um, which means we're going to move a presence to here, uh, this presence here, or maybe move a presence in here. It depends on if we want a sacred site or not. We're also definitely going to want to. Uh, place a presence. Fire and Flood, um, there's no crazy, there's no mad rush on that. So I think we're going to reclaim. And given that we do have Fire and Flood though, I think I will make the Sacred Site in here. Um, though it is tempting to have a presence in here if we are thinking of using Gold's Allure. So actually, let's let's think about what I'm doing this turn. So we're definitely Aegising. And I think an Absorb Essence would be good. It does net gain us um, two energy. So I think we're going to be doing something like the... Um, possibly the Aegis... Uh, the Gift Essence Aegis trick. Um, to get us... Do we need that extra fire, though? We're going to have a fire off here as well, potentially. Yeah, I think it's worthwhile. So I think I might put a presence in here. With the idea that I will use whatever destructive power I have in this coastal uh, this coastal land. Bearing in mind events mean everything's a little bit fuzzy. Um, but what it might mean is I could do some real damage in here. Where there's, there's not that much damage I can do in here because there's just not that much in there to destroy. Yeah, and if I'm I'm definitely not going gold to lure this time, so no real pressure to make a put a presence in one of these lands. Um, so this will move. We'll make a sacred site, and then we'll place a presence, and we'll go for the fire. We don't have plant elements for this kind of shenanigans. Um, so I'm going to place this in here, with the idea that I can batter it around with whatever I <laughs> whatever I get from this. So here's our elemental aegis. Um, which currently is for three, um, should be for three defense. And we're going to gift a flowing power into the absorb essence. And we incidentally are going to have, uh, ooh, we don't have moons. Oh, we're going to get a moon off absorb essence. Yeah. And a mountain and the rest. Okay. Okay. So we're going to Aegis... Um, we're Aegising from here. So sometimes you actually have to Aegis before you eat your presence because there might not be a presence where you want it. Um, but in this case, it's fine. So we'll, we'll um, absorb our essence now. Uh, oh yeah, of course, we have to target ourselves and we'll absorb this one. You've got to be careful with uh, yoinking away sacred sites that you need for targeting, especially if you're thinking of this. So Absorb Aegis, uh, Absorb Essence is now giving us another element. Um, if we if we absorb, if we go for a third mountain, we could destroy this city this turn. Because we'll have um, four fire and three mountains, which is three damage. Destroying cities is always a nice thing to do um, if you've got the opportunity. They're just that bit more... You can't mess around with cities as much as you can with towns. Okay, so there's our Aegis for the defend. And in each land with at least two explorers, push an explorer to an adjacent land without invaders. Okay. Um, and then beast, we, I don't think we have a beast anymore, and then a bit of defend. Okay, there was no choice to be made there. 
and then we have the sand ravage. So that was defended. That that had defend plus counter. And okay, we've got some some sand stuff. And this is fine. This is very defendable um, with our Aegis. And now we have Serpent Rouses to Anger. So we'll do it in here. We've got three damage, so we kill the city. And then we gain another two fear from the, the Moon Mountain bit of it. And we can push a town. Okay, so given that pushing this town potentially solves this problem for us, um, we're probably still going to defend it here anyway. And we're thinking about placing a presence in here for the sake, if we are going to maybe be luring people into the mountains, we may as well start doing that now. The one place we definitely don't want to push it is here because that's a city build. Um, pushing here is interesting, except that remember, we, we can't defend both jungles. So yeah, we definitely don't want to push in here. We don't want to push in here. I think pushing in here is worthwhile. So we'll push in here. Okay. So we're back here. We have a Ravage here for one damage, a Ravage here for three. So yeah, we want to do something about this. We really do. We're up to six energy. And as long as the thing is, this like, this first bit of the game, it might not look like we're getting a lot done. I mean, getting to Terra 2 is pretty nice. We do have all these fear cards. But as long as you're absorbing and aegising and getting down these tracks, you know, it's all it's all okay. Right. So we have this. Oh, yeah, this is perfect. We can place a presence in here that will be future for future kind of luring. And then we can use that for the Aegis, for these Ravages. I still think we want more presence on the island. Um, and interestingly, Aegis is our only defend card. <laughs> so, um, so there's that. We're going to gain an any element. Which opens up some possibility of maybe getting these these other other tricks. And if we absorb essence another time, we might be able to think about using a fire and flood next turn. And that, I mean, yeah, if we're lucky, that might that might put us very close to ending the game. But yeah, we definitely. I mean, another tricky thing you can do with serpent is deliberately let lands take blight, so you lose presence, and then this cap doesn't affect you so much. Um, it's a bit more risky. Um, given how powerful um, Absorb Essence is in solo, I kind of don't think that's necessarily that useful in solo. But it might might be useful for your multi-spirit. Might be. I don't know. Um, so, we're Aegising in here. I think it gives us a bit of safety on that. So we need a presence in here. We need to reclaim to Aegis. So I think we go with this. we go with the straightforward... Um, we do. We could move a presence in here, uh, or alternatively, we could move in here. We can't actually place presence in here because there is um, blight in there. I actually like this. Um, this being in here. Um, this is a useful land for this um, for this aegis, and then we could place a presence, and we could actually place it. Um, because there's going to be a, la uh, a town built in here. But we are going to want to have useful... We are going to want a presence in here anyway. But again, I... Th mm. Do we set up the sacred site for, fire and for a future fire and flood? This is so def so nicely defendable with each. I think again I'm going to do this. So no plan to fire and flood just yet. Though interestingly... We probably could do something like um, Gift of Flowing Power into Fire and Flood um, fairly soon. Like something like Gift Absorb Fire and Flood, but I mean, there's there's no need. If you were going to do something like this, of course, we can. You can save your presence by moving it as well. But but I think we should be able to safely, hopefully, safely play Fire and Flood very soon. Very soon. Also, this reclaim one spot is lovely because it means we don't need to keep on <laughs> reclaiming um, our presence. Okay, so we definitely need to sing. 
and we could do the old gift trick. The gift trick again is it's um yeah, quite a lot of quite a lot of damage. And you notice now we've got an any. You don't have to in the app, you don't have to do this up front and in the in the physical game you don't have to either. You could you can wait. Uh one little tip with that is that if you sometimes just having a pip into green is just that gives you an extra energy a lot of the time. Um Okay, so we're gonna gift a flowing power. We're gonna play a power card. Um we can absorb an essence. And we could and th this one uh, is favorable to remove. It's not doing as much for us. It's this is harder for us to put there. <laughs> um so we'll absorb this one over here. There's also a tiny danger that this this might get destroyed, I guess. Uh now we get a pip. So bear in mind this only affects buildings. So currently there aren't going to be... There's no point getting a third pip of mountain because we, there are no cities in here. I mean, the event might put one in, but unlikely. So if we go for a pip of plant, though, all of a sudden we get ourselves an extra energy and every every little bit of energy counts. Um, oh, interestingly, we actually... We've got our any still. This any here. Um... So we could actually destroy two towns. So maybe if I'd thought, if I planned accordingly, we could have had a presence in there. Um, yeah, that might have worked. But we could maybe do this. Oh no, no, not quite. What are we? What are we short? We're short a mountain. We're getting dangerously close to being able to place extra presence. <laughs> But we, you know, you don't actually you, to do well in solo. You don't need to, you know. That's that's not like a must-have um, thing to to be triggering. It's nice, don't get me wrong, but it's uh, not essential. Okay, uh, so what have we got? We're in stage two. In each land, at least two buildings replace half with with a city. Okay, so in this two D mode, which is awesome, we need to use this little eye to be able to distinguish these. So we've kept our our building with strife. Scapegoats, okay. Each player may gather and explore all town into a coastal land, defend two in all coastal lands. So defend two in all coastal lands, you say. Hmm. Let's think about our fire and flood. When this is up and running, it's gonna do eight damage in two lands. One at range one and one at range two. Actually, interesting. I've been thinking of this as them being adjacent. I don't use this fire and flood very often. Um, so they don't actually need to be adjacent. So if we get fire and flood at full power, it's going to do... It's going to do eight damage. So we could stick another town in here. Or, or, or extra pieces or... Now, we're going to destroy this town anyway in the slow phase with Serpent Rouse and Anger. There's not much point in dragging it out. So we will, we will drag out an explorer. Um, okay, so we have the ra Ravage in the Wetlands, which is defended. And okay, more wetland stuff. So we've got our Rousing in Anger, which will destroy a town in among in with us, and we gain energy. Let's just do the energy. So, okay, we should be able to fire and flood next turn. What a glorious day. We've also got um, a s Sand Ravage next turn. Ooh, I feel like I might have got a bit confused. I might be trying to do stuff ahead of... Uh, I might have got ahead of myself a little bit. Let's... Um, if we destroy this town, we're going to prevent a town build. So that's pretty good. Oh, sorry, a city build. Okay. So we have these two ravages, and again, the Aegis helps us. But this reclaim one will mean that we can defend both of these ravages um, without using our reclaim cards. We might still use our reclaim cards anyway. <laughs> um. Because we we're not really penalized for doing so. There's gonna be a town build in here. Yeah, we've got plenty of deep slumber tracks, so we can we you know, all of our presence now 
are fine, I think. Fine. There's eight on our board, on our map. Yeah, so we don't have to worry about presence limitations anymore. Um, we just need to make sure we Aegis. So we could, um, we could just reveal this Reclaim 1 and get our Aegis back. Um, Fire and Flood is going to be, interestingly, Fire and Flood's going to be a bit sad without... Actually, interesting. So I, I was thinking that I'd want both of these thresholds, the three fire and the three water, so I got two lots of eight damage. But it looks like I'm not going to have eight damage worth of stuff to destroy anyway. So we don't need the threshold. We want one threshold for in here, because um, this is um, six health worth of things. And if we push... If, if we use um, our uh, innate to push this town into here, then that would be even more damage of things. But we don't need both thresholds. So, I think um, I'm going to reveal that Reclaim 1 and maybe gain just gain a power card. Gain a, gain a minor power card. We might even win now. If we defend successfully in here, this should clear this land. There will be a town built in here. Um key thing we need to make sure is that we actually have a sacred site. So we will be making a sacred site in here. Let's do this. Let's do that now. So this is just so that I don't make a cognitive error. So we've revealed the reclaimed one so we can get our Aegis back. And now we've got... We could do any of these really. Um, we could do any. Actually we could... If we go, we could do any. I think Aegis Fire and Flood is the cleanest way. There might be a clever, a clever way of doing this. The other thing that's interesting is if we go for the energy, we might be able to Fire and Flood two times in a row. Um, let's have a, let's think about this a little bit more. So next, this turn, there's going to be a town built here and here. Um, so there will be a ravage in both of these lands but if we use our um, serpent rouse and anger on the town that's in here we don't have to worry about this land we just have to worry about this land mm. our energy income is still negligible and will be for a while we don't need another power card I'm actually going to go with this option um, this is possibly a better option but we're gonna, I'm going to go with this one. Um, so we definitely want our Aegis back. And now we can go Fire and Flood. And we can go Aegis. So we should have one of the thresholds in Fire and Flood, which is all we should need. We've got the Defend here. And we've coincidentally... Oh, we don't have the, the Moon and Air I wanted. Hmm, that... We, yeah, maybe I'm being too greedy. It's like I just thought, ah, oh, I could use this plus four energy. I never use that plus four energy. But I think the reclaim is is going to be significantly better. Because if we claim, we, if we reclaim this turn, we don't need to reclaim next turn. No, I don't think it matters. I think I'm um, arguing with myself here over nothing so we'll make we'll, we'll shift that to that you don't actually have to move anything uh, when it tells you to move okay so let's um we definitely need to sing and we can gift of flowing power to um to get the fire and the flood so we should have all the thresholds and fire the flood um and we've now we've got all the cards we need for next turn um Yeah, we could just get them. Okay, we can go with um, gaining a mountain element. Yeah, I I know that there's a better solution here, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and puzzle it out. I'm not gonna do it. Okay, so we we do that. We gift a flowing power, and of course we don't have to play far in the flood here, but I I want to, so I'm doing it. <laughs> no more useful explaining here. Okay, rising interest in the island. Your island is unlike any of the invaders the invaders have seen. Their leaders begin to take interest in tales of strangeness. You may ignore their curiosity. Um, so add a town to land without one. 
that's actually not that bad. We, but returning the top card of the Invader deck isn't ideal. It will speed up the game, and we we don't have that fast to start. That he's, I'm about to splat them with Fire and Flood. Weave lies in the minds of their observers. Cost four energy per player, aided by air. We don't have any air. Return the top fear card to the box during the next normal ravage. Each building does extra damage. So it doesn't make any difference to our ravage that we have here. Um, uh, interesting. We don't actually have... I don't think we've got an option here. We don't have any cards with air <laughs> at all. Our only... Yeah, we have no way of actually paying for this. So we have to do this. Okay, so we have to add a town and a land with that one. So, whenever you have to add extra stuff, you don't really want to do it in lands that are about to ravage or build, typically. So that leaves us with mountains and forests or jungles. Now, we've already talked a little bit about why we don't really want... The, why the jungles are more awkward for us, because we can't Aegis them. So I'm not going to add... Actually, no. I was thinking I would add jungles because of preventing explorers, but in this case... Oh yeah, I am going to add it in here. Now, why is that? The reasoning is that if we, if this goes to plan and we counterattack the edge, we'll clear all the buildings out of this land. Oh no, there's going to be a building here. What I was thinking was I could prevent this explore. Fine, okay. I'm going to... I'm not going to place it in here because that's going to create a city build. I'm going to place it here because it's on the coast. Um. So... We're going to get to add a beast to a jungle. Uh, so we'll add a beast in there as well. That might that might deal with it. And we get to add a wild, wild token somewhere with Dahan. I um, actually quite like here as a place without Dahan because we might end up dragging um, invaders into this mountain anyway. Each player removes an explorer or town from a land with a disc. Um, okay. We could prevent the build. If we prevent the build, that's one less town to think about. Um, damn it, we're actually not going to get the... Yeah, damn it, we're not actually going to get to destroy something. I think I've miscalculated somewhere. Let's prevent the build. So we could, we could remove this town, but let's prevent the build instead might be an inaccuracy I've got that feeling I've got that feeling that there are better moves that are escaping me so we didn't oh that was the good thing about the prevent that build is that we we didn't get an explorer in this jungle okay my unconscious has, has noticed that my conscious brain is uh is napping okay so we do actually have an element here so this might be a time to get a pip of green because we don't have enough oh, 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 oh we could destroy a town What's going on, peasant? What's going on? So, we've got loads of fire. I just love this moon mountain one, I guess, is maybe what's going on there. Okay, so we've got two damage in one in a land with us. We only have one land uh, to buildings. We only have one land where that's applicable. And we are actually pretty close to just winning here, um, but not quite. <laughs> so, we can do use fire and flood now. Um, we can clear this land. Um, oh, we've got to choose the second land now for some reason. So, okay. So we've got a Ravage in here um, next turn and a Build in here next turn. So, I mean, it's much of a muchness, really. If we just defend in this land, then the Dahan will counterattack. So let's let's hit this land. There's also an extra explorer in there. Uh, I'm not sure I ever targeted this with... Um, so we're going to get to do additional damage in either. Oh, wow, you can actually stack it all in one. Yeah, it shows you how, how rarely... Shows you how rarely I actually use that card. Okay, so it's look the island's looking pretty good. We are two fear away from from um winning for the being no cities. 
Um, uh, okay, so what's the actual border look like? No build here. A city will be built here. No ravage here. Yeah, we're going to have some exploring on the coast. So for the sake of um, trying to make this finish in under an hour, let's um, let's just reclaim our cards. Let's um, let's just do a pretend move. So I've just picked it up and let it go. Let's gain four energy. Oh wow, is this not actually going to work? <laughs> Because here's the thing, we need two fear to get to Terra 3. If we destroy a city, we'll get two fear. So just playing this without any buffs should be should be enough. Um, but we'll, we'll stick out gold to look because we've <laughs> been talking about it all game and never got to use it. Apart from that one time. Okay, act to ease the drought. Uh, this is a very nice event for us mo most of the time. Because this option here costs four energy per player aided by water. We get to add a presence to to a land where we're in with Dahan. We don't have a land where we're in with Dahan. It's still better than ease that than they actually are letting the drought happen. So we will pay our four energy and then we won't get to do it. How do we pay it? Just by discarding cards. This is the joy. This is the one of the many joys of playing as a playing as a spirit that has uh, no penalty on the reclaim. Oh, wait a second. Our beast is going to finish the game for us. Okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> anyway, that was an attempt to no explain for spirit. Like the video if you liked the video. Let me know what you thought. If you're a if you're a serpent expert, I know I know you exist. You might not be watching this, but I know you exist. This is a fascinating spirit. There's a a lot of funky stuff you can do um, with this spirit. Yeah, really fun one to get into. And also, I know that I played this as a branch of cloil run through, but there. You don't need to play with Branch of Claw um, for this to be a fun and interesting spirit. So yeah, definitely one to check out. Anyway, I'm off. Bye.